the only guy out of the entire cast when we were picking everyone who we all saw and went, okay, Teal'c, good, moving on. <laughs> it was so obvious. We just, he spoke, he's got the voice, he's got the presence, his arms are as thick as my waist. He's just a, he was the guy. You. It, it's very difficult to write for Teal. He doesn't, you know, make suggestions. He doesn't jump in and make jokes. He doesn't share in the same banter that the other three members of SG-1 often participate in. But he is, in so many ways, the center you know, he's the still one. He's the center of, of the group. How does she fly, son? The vehicle performed with unexpected parameters. Woohoo! Sorry, sir. I couldn't help but get caught up in Teal'c's enthusiasm. I think in the beginning, Teal'c was very uh, focused on his people and their plight and, and freeing his people and his wife and son and didn't really care to assimilate much with uh, human beings or, or anyone else that he came across. I think he was uh, very single-minded in his quest to uh, help his help his people. Father! Brack! I never meant to hurt you, Father. Brack has returned. Does anyone besides me think this was just a little too easy? Yeah, careful, Tilt. That was an awfully fast turnaround. My son is strong. His mind has overcome the lies of his place there. I think Korai was uh, the show where you really saw what an honorable and honest character that Teal'c is. So you were following orders? Hano's father died by my hand. No one else's. I am responsible. What I did while serving Apophis I will not hide from. Even if the punishment is death? Then that is what I deserve. Teal'c, you sound like you want to die. Colonel O'Neill, have you ever faced the crying eyes of a child whose father you have just murdered? Not exactly. The notion that uh, of honesty and uh, being accountable for things in your life, no matter what the repercussions are, uh, is... I think that's the pure essence of Teal'c. Teal'c looks scary in Take Point. General, maybe we should consider using the Stargate as a strategic weapons platform. We already tried to send a team through to Dr. Jackson's coordinates. It won't work. And I can't think of any military reason to wipe out the people of Chulak. Since I am no longer wanted or needed here, I respectfully request permission to join one of the teams headed for the Alpha site, at least Permission there. denied. The idea is to send the best and brightest, Colonel. When the time comes, you will stand alongside the men and women of this command in defense of this facility. But, sir... I ask no more or less of myself. Dismissed. The biggest compliment to Don that I can think of is that uh, he truly does portray uh, a military officer, especially a command military officer, with with accuracy. He doesn't. He's not bombastic. He doesn't throw orders around like most television generals or film generals, for that matter. He he he's a thoughtful, considerate man, and and I think uh, that lends a lot of credibility to the character. You've all been briefed on the mission by Colonel Makepeace. You know the enemy. You know the risks. What I'm trying to say is I would rather not order you to do this. So I would like all of those willing to attempt the rescue of SG-1 to take one step his strengths are his intense loyalty to his people and to his family. There is an episode called Chain Reaction in which some people threaten to kidnap his grandchildren. And as a result, he resigns. Uh, he leaves the command, uh, regardless of how much he's invested in it and how much he loves the service. He will not cross that line. Let me just say it's been a pleasure serving with all of you. Miss you, sir. It won't be the same without you, sir.
On Chulak, when a great warrior retires from the field of battle, it is customary to sing a song of lament. Fortunately, we are not on Chulak. Take care of yourself. That episode, when he commits a court-martialable offense, to go save SG-1, going through the gate himself and using aliens uh, to save SG-1. There's no way that, other than his superiors uh, caring that much about him, that he could get away with that. And yet he'll give up everything. What exactly did he mean by threading the needle? Observe. I think that those people are people that you want to invite into your house every week. And they are people that obviously care about each other. And, um, and I think that comes through on the show in a way that, you know, the longer it's on the air, the more their bonds grow more firm. And uh, I think that's invaluable. Well? Well, hopefully you've now gained a little more insight into our show and its characters and enjoyed following their many adventures. Oh, time flies. Say what, Bradley? Yes, it does, Richard. You know, our goal continues to focus on taking these characters in new directions and pushing the envelope wherever we can. Which, by the way, I think is the most important aspect of all production. And you're right again. That's true. Thank you. Hi, I'm Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> which apparently is very funny. So where should we start? <laughs> the beginning? <laughs> Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and the Stargate set of... Look, I could, I could dig my way out of it if you wouldn't laugh so much. I have a way. Some have a way with words, some not have way. No. I no. are one of them. <laughs>